In this video, we are going to perform a reaction six times between baking soda and vinegar, or sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid. Our materials are things you can find in your home, and if you have water bottles and balloons, baking soda and vinegar, you can do this on your own to confirm my results. And while you may not have an accurate enough scale, you'll be able to see um, the reaction take place on your own. Um, but I'm going to do it here in this video, and I have six trials set up, um, one through six, and the numbers don't look like they're appearing super great on the video, but this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I've prepared uh, two through six, and I'll walk through the preparation for trial number one. Uh, so I have here a 150 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. You can use an empty water bottle for this as well. And I am going to use balloons, and these are just party balloons. Um, and what I've done is I've weighed out sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. And uh, this is easiest done with a piece of paper. I'm using weighing paper. And I'm going to uh, tap all of that baking soda into this balloon. All right, I have all the baking soda in there. I'm gonna kind of shake it so it goes to the bottom and it's all, I can feel it down in here. Um, so that'll be the baking soda for the reaction. And then I also have vinegar. And here I've used a graduated cylinder to measure 50 milliliters of household vinegar, which is a, and I'll let you see the marking there. So it's pretty much right on the 50 milliliter mark. And this is a 5% by volume. So 5% volume over volume acetic acid solution. Uh, then I'm going to pour into my Erlenmeyer flask. And now I'm going to measure and record the mass of this entire setup, the balloon, the flask, the baking soda, and the vinegar all together. I'm going to then compare this after the reaction, after I've released the gas, um, and see how much um, of my vol or how much of my mass was lost at to forming gas that leaves um, into the atmosphere. So I'm going to walk this over and weigh it on our scale. And I'll pause and show you the result. So I'm weighing my balloon, sodium bicarbonate, vinegar, or acetic acid and Erlenmeyer flask, I'm getting a total mass of 138.495 grams. So now I have all of my flasks again together, and what I'm gonna do is start setting up the experiment. I want to be able to capture any gas that forms, so I'm going to add my baking soda from the balloon. But to set this up, I'm first going to put the balloon around the Erlenmeyer flask like this, being really careful not to dump the contents in. I'm gonna to wanna to be able to dump the contents of the balloon into it all um, kind of close to the same amount of time. Um, and so now I'm gonna go through and set this up for each of the other uh, flasks. Okay, I've added the balloons filled with baking soda to each of the um, flasks, and I've put a whiteboard up to show which ones they are. So we're going one to six across, and um, you will be provided the exact mass of baking soda in each of these balloons in your lab manual. We've got 0.626 grams in our first beaker's balloon. We have 1.203 grams of baking soda in number two. We have 2.473 grams in beaker number three. We have 4.839 grams in flask number four. We have 7.228 grams in flask number five. And we have 9.628 grams of baking soda in uh, Erlenmeyer flask number six. And these correspond to one eighth, one fourth, one half, one, one and a half, and two tables or teaspoons of baking soda. In each of these, we have our 50 milliliters of vinegar, which is a 5% solution of acetic acid. And if you were to do this at home, this would be about a quarter of a cup, a little bit less, 0.2 cups 
or uh, 1.7 ounces. So a little bit more than one and a half ounces of vinegar in each um, container. And again, you can do this with uh, water bottles instead of flasks. So now I'm gonna shake the contents of each balloon into each flask and we'll watch the um, carbon dioxide gas evolve. Hold on to this because I think it might fall. So you can see the difference visually in the volume of the gas that we're producing on these. This one's bubbling up actually into the balloon. So it looks like our first three reactions are just about done. Um, and so we will be using this visual information, but also we'll be doing calculations to determine when is the baking soda the limiting reactant in the reaction? And when is the acetic acid or vinegar the limiting reactant in the reaction? And so just looking at the balloon sizes now, um, you should be able to estimate about when you think that switch happened, when it was the baking soda or when it was the vinegar that was the limiting reactant. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the balloons um, and weigh this again. We're gonna let all of this air escape. And so once this re each reaction is done, we'll start down here. It's not bubbling anymore. I'm gonna take off the balloon, release all that gas, and then we'll measure the mass of the balloon, the Erlenmeyer flask, and the reaction mixture. And we sh should see a smaller mass, and that's going to account for the carbon dioxide that was lost into the room. Uh, so let's pause and I'll take you over to the scale to look at the mass. So this is for our first trial. Our mass now is 138.315 grams. Now I'm gonna go through for each of the other trials. I'll release the gas from the balloon and record the mass of everything all together. And this data will be given to you in your lab manual so you can complete the calculations for the lab. 